So because this interview was so impactful for not just myself, but I could tell a lot of Noah's audience, I wanted to break it down from my perspective of, of what I've seen as far as James being a heart uh, centered leader and someone who exudes sort of this new era of leadership where you can be connected, you can build relationships from a heart-centered, fully aligned, authentic place and uh, and reap rewards from it as well, as you can see from him flying in his private jet. So the first thing that I wanted to say was I used to get triggered over Noah. Um, for for some reason, actually not for some reason, I know exactly what it was, but I would get so uh, turned off and angry towards him because he was so authentic. He was so in alignment and unapologetically himself. It it actually annoyed me because I could I felt previously that I couldn't be myself, that I needed to be somebody else. And for him to be like, yo, 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 it's your rabbi, your boy. Uh, I'd get, I'd be like, who the heck can talk like that and still build a following? Like it just blew my mind as I've deepened into myself and my own authenticity and my own alignment. I've actually come to appreciate Noah so much more. And I now champion him and root him on for his authenticity and for him being who he is. So it's really interesting to, I, I wanted to share that with you was like my relationship with Noah and I've met him a couple times, um, has not been, um, all sunshine and rainbows. It, it, I, I used to not enjoy him pretty viciously. Um, fast forward to today. I'm so happy that he puts himself out there, that he stretches and, and inspires you. And I am so, so, so happy that he was able to link up with James because I think James has a true definition and his true inspiration. Sure, Noah goes and interviews people on yachts and boats and in planes and this and that. And like, cool. But what James shares is like, what really matters? What James shares is 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 what it's really all about. I feel this is my own opinion. So I want to break down what James said in this interview and why it's so impactful, especially coming into this new paradigm of the world that we're living in, uh, the the systems and the structures and what we th thought was success previously is changing at such a rapid rate. And there's this new paradigm being ushered in. And James is, uh, is a great example of that, of what he shares with Noah. And I'm so honored that Noah was able to interview him um, in, in this format. So I have some notes here and I'm going to go through some things, but I'm going to share and show what, uh, what uh, was said. Uh, and there's a lot that has um, in the beginning, but really the meat of this interview starts around the 20 minute mark. So we're just going to jump to that and let's see what he has to say. So what's really interesting here is I cut off a little bit of what what James said, but Noah asked James three or four times, what are some of the perks of being wealthy? What homes do you have? What cars? Like, what? tell me about the stuff. And he just keeps coming back to, I get more of me. I get more of myself. I get to solve problems, which is what he shares multiple times in this interview that lights him up. So he just gets more of himself, the more wealth that he has. And that is huge. Unfortunately, most people don't know who they are. And uh, and if you have a more wealth and you don't know who you are, you're just going to uh, amplify the inauthenticity 
Um, and if you are authentic, if you are in alignment and you have wealth, man, it just amplifies more of who you are. It's beautiful. I loved how Noah asked the question multiple, multiple times, trying to get him to tell him about his homes or this or that. And just like the, 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 the luxury lifestyle. And James just keeps coming back. I just get more of me. I just get more of me. That is huge. So now we're going to go uh, speed this up a little bit here, uh, right around the 23-minute mark. Um, let's go right here. Let's see what he has to say here. You need to help yourself. You need to help yourself. You need to uh, be happy. You need to follow your heart. You need to follow your dreams and your passions. And he said something really interesting here. Don't fall into a codependent rut where you're providing for other people at the detriment of yourself. I'm going to expand a little bit on that and kind of like read between the lines. Um, and for my own personal background, like I'll share that in here, but don't fall into a codependent pattern where you where you're sacrificing yourself, your desires, your needs, your wants, your your light, your passion, your your authentic self for somebody else to keep you in this trauma bond. And it's really interesting. Uh, you could tell that there's a lot of wisdom that that uh, James has uh, as far as relationships, families, uh, business. Uh, and he's sharing that here, but if you glossed over that codependency, you may have missed it. So focus on not being in a codependent um, pattern, and how can you break out of that? Do you ever regret working so much? So one thing that I like that uh, James said here, yeah. why is this not the one thing that I like that James says here and is uh, that there was a, there was an event, there was a divorce that forced him to look at things uh, and where he was out of balance, where he was out of alignment and it forced him back into alignment. And he's saying here that, you know, he did work a lot where he was out of balance or out of alignment and, um, and he said, I would give it all away um, uh, knowing what he knows now, which is a testament to the trials and tribulations that he's been through. And um, um, it's it feels to me like he's been able to find alignment and now hopefully share and inspire some of you to make sure, hey, make sure that you are in alignment. Make sure that you are in balance. Make sure that you you are operating authentically. Um, uh, before a cataclysmic event happens, like a divorce or a business failure or anything like that. Punching through comfort zones.
He's saying here that we we emphasize as a culture so much our careers that we actually forget to look holistically at all aspects of our lives. So when we are trying to push out of our comfort zones and we put glass ceilings over ourselves where we stay complacent and stagnant, well, where are, else are you staying complacent and stagnant? Uh, not just in your career, but are, is it your health? Is it your mental, physical, emotional health? Is it in your relationships, familial, family, uh, friends, children, spouses? Where are those relationships complacent and stagnant. Don't put glass ceilings over yourself in just the career bucket, but look holistically at your life to see where you're playing small, where you're holding yourself back, where you're not really living up to your full maximum potential. Massive here. So now right here, you'll see there, there's a spike in the most played, um, uh, replayed. So let's dive into this. We'll we'll listen to it. I'm going to give a little hypothesis on why I think this is the most uh, replayed, but then I'll dive into the things that I like most about it. So the, it, this spike starts with assimilating worst case scenario. I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. If we're going to constantly assimilate worst case scenarios, yes, I'm, I'm positive that risk mitigation is a critical factor when being very successful, uh, whether that's in a relationship it, mostly in finances, right? So if you're in finances, corporate, uh, business, like risk mitigation is key. You don't want to work so hard and then have one move that will uh, wipe out all the years of hard work that you've done. So mitigating those risks, understanding all the risks and the potential for those. It's not being 100% risk-free. It's evaluating the risks and saying, can I live with the repercussions of that. And that has been a big uh, uh, mindset shift for me when coming into business opportunities or anything like that is like, okay, there's going to be risk in everything. There's risks in not making a move. There's risk in making a move. There's risks uh, making a move to a certain extent. Um, there's risks after post making a move, uh, Six months in, 12 months in, 24 months in, like there's going to be risk. It's being calculated with those risks. And can you live or can you mitigate the downside as much as possible? He then gets into um, talking about, you know, d reading, learning. Um, and he ends up saying here about Keith Cunningham, I'll let him finish. He uh, honors Keith Cunningham uh, and Keith Cunningham's four-day MBA. Keith Cunningham also has a another course called uh, How to Buy and Exit a Business. Um, I have attended both of those, and I will echo what James is saying here. It is the best program, hands down, for any business owner. If you want to learn business, learn strategy, learn growth, learn finances, learn competitive advantages, learn marketing, learn customer acquisition, it is the best money and time you will spend. Go there, get as much out of it as you can. Um, I still use uh, Keith's four day MBA and how to buy and exit a business. I'm actually, this stuff on my wall right here is directly pulled from my pamphlet of how to buy and exit a business. 
uh, because I'm actually under a business acquisition right now. Uh, and I'm utilizing this as a, I utilized his framework to pull and tease out, you know, different risks and scenarios, different opportunities, growth, strengths, SWOT analysis is the whole nine. Keith Cunningham is a G and, um, I will echo what James is saying here. Mm-hmm. It's true. This is huge. So he he shares his uh, his distaste for the education system because it does uh, produce weak people. Um, I I just agree with that. So it's I agree with that. You don't necessarily have to. Uh, I will echo James in this. And yeah, it does. Uh, there needs to be real downside. There needs to be real consequences. Uh, people uh, by having more at stake you're willing to put more of, of yourself on the line. And then that's where growth happens. That's where, uh, prosperity, uh, c comes in, right? So like you push yourself to do something hard when there's things at stake. And then if you do and accomplish those things, now there's a sense of pride that you can go and do hard things, right? I tell my kids this all, all the time. You can do hard things. I believe in you go and do the hard things. And they're three and five, right? So, um, then he gets into, we are so focused um, and on external things, things that don't even – that are completely beyond our control, completely beyond our control on other sides of the world that we don't have any impact on, uh, yet we get so indated with, with making those our reality where we lose sight of, wait a second – what about here? What about right now? What about local? What about my neighbor? What about my HOA? What about internally? What can I focus on for me here in this reality here? Not something over there. And I'm a huge believer that we are going through this renaissance of globalization, but we're out now contracting. We're contracting and springing back to a localization um, and this is one reason why I'm I'm building out micro factories to build locally um, using 3D printers and, and advanced materials and technology to bring lo local manufacturing back where we don't need to farm it out to other countries or go overseas in different time zones and different language barriers. Like you can literally go down the road and get something made. Uh, this is a huge a uh, pivotal change in society that's happening right now and i believe that if we if we can adopt this if we can put down our fear put down our scarcity put down our like stranger danger right we can actually build such community and such belonging where we all prosper together when there's community and there's belonging and there's safety in a local area uh, that's how, that's how we create a ripple effect to create, um, more change in a positive way.
I'm going to fast forward up here to the health reboot, how to reboot your health. Uh, and listen to what James says here. It's really interesting. If you slow this down enough and dissect exactly what he's saying, you can absolutely transform your health in 10 days. You can do it actually sooner if you just do a fast. So he's talking about where you, you go into a full immersion, uh, go off grid, unplug, unwind, uh, recalibrate for 10 days. Yeah, that'll absolutely do it. If you don't have the means to go out and do a 10-day immersion, literally do a water fast for five days and see what that does for your body. Um, um, it, you will completely rewire your health in just three to five days. It's, it's fascinating. What I loved about what he said here, he mentioned relationships three or four or five times in this he talked about who you're around, who you're around, who you're around, who you're around, who you're around. He, it's so vital that we are such energetic beings that we will start picking up energy from other people in our environment and hold it as our own. We will. It's, it's fact. So as we are picking up everybody else's energetic bullshit, on a daily basis, it's really good to make sure that you're purging that. And what he's saying is like, make sure you're around healthy people. So if you need to go and do a detox, detox from unhealthy people, detox from uh, some, uh, some stagnant mindsets, from limiting mindset, from limiting energetic behaviors, from uh, uh, people who may not be as forward focused or, or, just as health conscious. So rather than hanging around people who just go out and drink at five o'clock for happy hour every day after work, that limit your interaction with them. That is going to create a huge impact on your health, a huge impact on how you feel about yourself, how you walk, how you stand, how you uh, orient to yourself and then to others. And eating is incredibly important. If you are inputting garbage into your body, you are going to take on that garbage. So please watch what you're intaking. And you know what? You don't have to be so stringent and vigilant on, on it has to be organic. It has to be grass fed. It has to be this. It has to be that, that going back to the opening of this, keep it in balance. Everything is choice. Everything is moderation. So you know what? If you want to splurge and, and have that candy and, or cookie or ice cream, you know, that one night a week, you know what? Live your life. Don't beat yourself up about it. Go, but make sure that, you know, you, you counteract to make sure that it's not ice cream seven nights a week <laughs> or six nights a week. So everything in moderation here. Uh, James goes into how he spends most of his days, which seems to be important here. He spends a, spends a lot of time in, with his health, um, 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 stretching, and and it says here that he spends twenty five hundred a day on stretching. He probably doesn't spend twenty five hundred every day for the, uh, but maybe every time he hires somebody to do stretching, he spends twenty five hundred dollars that day to do 
the stretching. This physical health and mental health. This is what I wanted to jump into at one of the last things here. Uh, before he do, jumps into more of this here, which I want to, I, which I do want to get to, uh, what he's saying here is that, okay, so if you've never read the book, The Body Keeps the Store, Score, uh, it's a very dense, very academia book. So I recommend if you do, if you are interested in reading it, just read the the synopsis, the cliff notes. That will give you eighty percent of of what you need, right? So you don't need to get into all the details and all the scientific stuff. It's very heady. Um, but it's true that we store trauma in our bodies. We store, uh, ancestral trauma in our bodies. We store our own physical, uh, emotional, mental, and physical trauma in our bodies. We do that. Our mental state, our emotional state actually gets trapped in our bodies and then it manifests as a physical ailment. And what he's saying here is physical things come about through emotion, unresolved emotional traumas. It's, it's fascinating. And I'm so, so happy that this man who probably got you in to ride on his private jet and learn about all the business stuff, he's actually talking about emotional trauma and he deserves way more reverence right now because he brought you in with his private jet, but now he's going to transform your life through healing your emotional uh, childhood and generational trauma uh, if you feel called to it and if you can pick up um, the powerful message that he's sharing here. So what he's saying here is uh, there's a post-mortem that is taking place post the pandemic. Now, what most people, the pandemic shut us down as far as a society, as far as a human race. But what really was triggered during that two years of shutdown was a massive amount of fear was pumped into society. And that fear then triggered repressed trauma that we've either coped with throughout our lives or uh, suppressed uh, in some way, shape, or form or disassociated from. And because now we are stuck in in this uh, fear for the past two years, it's bubbling all of that stuff that we have not resolved up to the surface. So this is why the state of the world is the way that it is right now is because all of this unresolved fear, uh, all this unresolved trauma triggered by fear, scarcity, uh, and more fear is bubbling up all of our core traumas to the surface. And what James is saying here is there is a postmortem. Like it's not actually the shutdown of the education systems, of society, of business, of the supply chain. Like really that's all surface level. What really is is the root cause here is the emotional um, uh, trauma that we are coping with now after all of that. And James is saying that he is coming up with ideas and solutions to help humanity – 
um, heal from that, heal from that trauma that was induced by us. And then in, in, in turn also help heal trauma that was, uh, repressed or that we disassociated from previously. And this is powerful. This is, this is the cutting edge, bleeding edge work that is happening right now. He is right that there is a shift. There is going to be a shift from the materialistic world where people want things and stuff. And, uh, there it's at now actually going to be a barter system. It's going to be an emotional relation, um, transaction that is taking place. And I fully believe that this is one reason why I started the quantum creator to help usher in and be, uh, a support for this movement, for this change that is taking place. So, um, So the last piece here is uh, at the 42-minute mark. Let's get over there. Um, so he talks about creating value in the U.S. And listen to this. Listen to this. I love his passion here. Part of the solution. Okay. How does he be his, his number one thing that he's sharing with you right now for himself, which is also a mirror for you. So if he's telling him himself, this it, take what he's take his wisdom, right? He, uh, James is wise. He's lived a life. So take, take this. And if it resonates with you, cool, carry it. If not, no worries, but why not? Why not have uh, someone who's got a lot of wisdom? He says, how am I going to create the change? I'm going to get healthy. Wow. That's his first thing. I'm going to get healthy. Healthy mind and healthy emotionally, healthy spiritually, and of course, healthy physically. So that is his number one focus on how he's going to do that, of how he's going to create change, how he's going to be a part of the solution, getting healthy. And then he goes into the secondary and tertiary benefits here where there's a lot of passion involved and I'm, I'm going to play it now and we'll, we will end on that. But James's uh, piece and his little nuggets throughout this whole thing is get healthy, clean up your baggage. Heals trauma, healed generational trauma, ancestral trauma, physical trauma, emotional trauma, heal and build relationships with people around you and to support one another, to build belonging, to build safety, to build trust, to help lift one another up um, and then do what you can to solve important problems. So I'm going to end here on, on his, his very passionate uh, <laughs> monologue. So <laughs> did you hear everything that I rattled off? He's going to be more wealthy, uh, be better licking, better uh, resourced, have more employees, a bigger planes, uh, better, well-connected. Well uh, oh, like he rattles all of this stuff off as a, as a result of being healthy, getting healthy. He can then do all of that other stuff, which then solves more problems, which is what he loves to do, which is what I love to do and uh, why I am championing James as a heartfelt leader who, 
who is a beacon of, you know, of this new paradigm that we're stepping into, who is a champion of, don't worry about the fucking Lamborghinis. Don't worry about the houses. Don't worry about the private jets. Like literally he's sitting in a private jet and he's like honoring the private jet, but he's really honoring. Like I actually get to solve really hard problems and that gets me the private jet. It's not, I'm focused on the private jet. He's like, I, it's a tool to allow me to live in my authenticity. It's a tool that allows me to do the things that I love to do. It's a tool that allows me to be more of me. Ah, doesn't that feel so much better? I could just feel the heart in it. I can feel the authenticity in it. Wow. And that is what I hope you get from get from this interview. And thank you again to Noah for stepping out, being courageous, doing hard things and putting himself in front of people like James to then get, be able to interview and then share this message because it is such a powerful, beautiful message. Ah, I'm so excited for this new paradigm. I'm so excited for what it is that we are creating, um, in this world. So I, yeah, I don't know. I actually, I know what I want you to do in here. Let's have a dialogue around this. Let's have a dialogue. What did you like about this video? What did you like about the interview? What was your favorite part about James? What was your favorite part about Noah? Uh, what didn't you like about this? Like, I want to hear what you liked, what you didn't like, and let's start a dialogue so we can infuse and make this not just a one-time interview event, but we can make this a ripple of change moving forward for entrepreneurs, for leaders, for heads of household, moms who are trying to anybody, anybody who's trying to live in heart, live in authenticity, live in their authentic alignment of who they are so that they can do more inspiring stuff for the world. Thank you guys.